We were at the U.S. Nationals, and I saw you standing up there, and I was just like, oh my gosh, yeah, you just got it. But this is Jim Head. You used to this car. You used to race this car. What does it mean to you to be here at the U.S. Nationals with a young driver like you on the wheel? Well, it's, it's uh, you know, I got sick of driving a, a while back, and uh, I've had a couple of drivers since. Blake's a great driver. It takes a lot of pressure off a tuner when you got a guy that can hit the gas on time, keep it in the groove. So uh, that's a big deal to us. I, I wouldn't be satisfied. I haven't had a bad driver yet. Uh, I've had three. Uh, I wouldn't put up with a bad driver. My guys wouldn't put up with it. It's too much work to uh, lose races to a bad driver. And what's it like this, this year knowing, you know, you all tried and tried and tried and just couldn't get it to click. And now this year, it's just like everything. It started at normal off and it's just, you know, you've been working your way. You won normal off. And now you've been having some real good runs here. So what's, does that add confidence to your program? Or? Well, you're only as good as the last race. And, and we screwed up. But, uh, well, we ran a 92 first round at Brainerd uh, just two weeks ago. The problem with that is I was up against Tasker who ran an 88. The problem at Brainerd is I didn't qualify well enough. So it'll be the same problem here. We're going to have to qualify well tonight. I believe I'm seventh, and we need to be better than that. We're capable of being in the top four. Uh, we were fifth qualify here last year. I mean, my career has been checkered with performance and then losing it and then fight and get the performance back and then lose it again. So we made some major changes over the winter in the bell housing and uh, the engine also. So things are, it's, it's really happy. I will say that. I, uh, so when in the motor's happy and the clutch is happy, it jumps out. And what's your favorite part about being here at the U.S. National? Uh, you know, drag strips are drag strips as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Obviously, I'm partial to the biggest race of the year, the U.S. National. I've got competition. We've got, you know, back in the day, we had 24 funny cars trying to ball five, 16 spots. So we got 20 here, and, and uh, that's good. Uh, you know, I wish we had 30. I love competition. Uh, so, yeah, being the biggest race uh, with the most competitors is uh, what I enjoy the most. Well, I know you got a job to do and you got things to do, but thank you so much, sir. And it's a pleasure to get into this with you. Good luck. We're here in the pits at Indy, U.S. Nationals with Buddy Hall. And tell us what you have in store with the paint scheme for us. Yeah, well, you know, we uh, we decided that we wanted to have a little fun this weekend in Indy. Hopefully inspire some young kids to get their minds and their eyes working. So we are running a Hulk theme. We spell that H-U-L-L apostrophe K. We're going to have some fun with it. The car is green and purple, and we sure are excited to get out there on the track and burn some nitro. I love green and purple cars. This car, I might, it doesn't say it's not Hulk inspired, but it, my colors are green and purple. That's cool. So yeah. it's awesome to see that. I saw you post that on Facebook, and I took a screenshot of it, and I put that in the Ron Cap Snake scheme together, and I said, like, it's going to be cool. Yeah. So what is, what is your opinion on bringing more awesome paint schemes into NHRA instead of just the typical old... Yeah, corporate America. Yeah. So I, I think it's important, and I think it's important because it adds to the show, right? People buy a ticket, they expect to come here and they see a show. And the show means, yeah, of course, it's a spectacle to see a 12,000 horsepower top wheel drag strip on the track. But, but you know, also there's the other side of it in which it's more similar to, or, or more relatable if, if for young adults and, and kids, if they see uh, a themed car, you know, and the a lot of my idealism comes out of, um, you know, the, the Monster Truck series, right? You know, Monster Jam is cool. It's just to be real, it's cool. And part of that coolness comes from the theming of those trucks. So, you know, we sold a little bit of their thunder, if you will, and uh, kind of did the same thing on the top wheel car. So you're talking about top wheel car. Paint scheme aside, still top wheel car, like you said. What exactly is, are you sitting in front of here for people that don't understand? Yeah, well, you know, it's a nitro burning Hemi. Uh, 1471 supercharger, 116 gallon fuel pump, two magnetos, and we're making roughly 12,000 horsepower. You know, we go uh, zero to 100 miles an hour in 60 feet, and we go zero to 330 miles an hour in under four seconds. So it's the most aggressive form of motor starts on the planet. And you're still kind of new to top fuel, right? Three years. I've been in top fuel three years. So, I, and you run the silver car, and I think that's what it is. Uh, it, it, it depends. Or, sometimes it's black and white. Sometimes it's black, silver, and white. Yep. Well, this is awesome. Thanks for letting me do this. You're very you. welcome. And yeah. good luck. Thank you so much, buddy. We're here in Indy in the pits with Angie Smith, yep. and we've seen a little bit more success this year. So, what's the plan on winning the 
us next? Well, we're just going to go out there and keep doing what we're doing. Um, we have just been really working on our program and just tried to stay focused and find horsepower and keep our head down. And so we'll see what happens come Monday. But right now we're just focused on Q1. And what's it like going up there? Because you love your husband before you married him. But what is it like going up there against him? Does it, when you put down the visor, you're just like, i got to kill this guy. I'm yeah, sure. I do. Because... Um, at the end of the day, I want to win just as bad as he does, and I want to beat him because he was six-time champ. So I want to win, and that's what's important to me. And uh, so when I put down the visor, I have no friends. Are the nerves a little different going into an event like U.S. Nationals, or is it all the same? We all want to win this race. Um, I don't feel like the nerves are any different. You all, We all just want to win this race. This is the epitome of drag race in this race, and it is like the Daytona 500 is to NASCAR. Everybody wants to win that race. So it's the U.S. Nationals, and there's a lot of added pressure, but at the end of the day, we're still going up there. It's the same. It's a racetrack, and you still got to do the same job. Well, thank you, Angie. Good thank luck. You. Thank you. Here at the U.S. Nationals with Matt Hagen, I've got a bone to pick with you. You stole my color scheme. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I just run with the sponsor for you know what I mean? So, uh... We're out here, I tell you, it's, uh, it's kind of a marathon week out here. You know, I've been out here since Sunday promoting everything, what Dodge and everybody's doing. And, uh, you know, it's kind of one of them deals where it's like, man, it was it's been a long week before it even got started. So we're glad to put a lap on the board out there last night and get a little something to play off of and see what we can do today. And last year, you well, you got three races to win and it starts today. Last year, you run it up to Ron and the funny car call out. What's the plan to go on and actually get the win? and? Car well, it's always a plan to win every weekend. You know, it's uh, sponsors pay a lot of money for us to be out here, and the pressure's always on, you know. But we got a great team. We've been able to keep everybody together for the last 11, 12 years, you know, and that says a lot for what we're we're doing and moving forward. But, uh, you know, Dickie Venables, you give that guy a couple runs and he'll figure it out, you know. So uh, it's uh, last night we didn't really probably press as hard as we should have, and uh, I think we're sitting fifth. But it'll be uh, some good data to work off of for today when it's sunny and a little bit warm and greasy out there. So we just have to go A to B and see what happens. And I I, I know you said you just run with the sponsors, but I talked to Ron about it and Buddy Hall with this cool paint scheme. Do you like running the cooler paint schemes more? Well, yeah, I mean, I like running whatever's fast. I don't care if it's <laughs> yeah, green, well, purple, pink or whatever, man. Uh, it's, uh, as long as we got us a good hot rod to race, that's all I really care about, going out there and making some runs, getting some good data to work off of. and. Uh, you know, uh, the time slip makes you look cool enough when it says fast on it, you know. Well, I know you're going somewhere. Thank you, man. Good All right, luck, buddy. Man. Thank you, brother. Be good. So we're in the trailer here with TJ Zizzo, and he is working on something. So it, it, these people are busy, real busy people. But I had to come talk to you. I about, just look busy, Donovan. I'm really not busy at all. <laughs> well, I had to come talk to you about last night after that. First ever time running 330 mile an hour. That's freaking awesome. I mean. It was cool. Um, got out of the car. First thing I told my dad is, hey, 300, right? And uh, yeah, they were jacked. Um, super exciting to come out here and do what we do on a very part-time basis uh, is spectacular. Um, it's spectacular to our competitors, the fans out there, even our teammates. We work really hard at this. I mean, right now I'm measuring head gaskets, right? Uh, brand new, gotta always double check, brand new. Um, but um, it's really exciting. So you, you're like you said, you're on a part-time schedule, and if you were to run full-time, you'd be like people like Terry Hannon, because you're not a four or five million dollar sponsor budget team. But is running fewer races in the season help the performance at the races you are at, and make it easier on the wallet? Great question. Yeah. Uh, first of all, there's only one way we would run full-time if the money was right. So firstly, <laughs> the money is absolutely correct to do what we do. So we come out here with the proper funding to do this, um, with some help from friends as well, right? Um, so that's why we come out here and we are competitive because, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm choking on a uh, almond. See, this is what I eat during the day, guys. I eat almonds. Um, Got to keep the car light somehow. And it's not my fat head either, or my bald. Maybe, maybe that's why I don't have any hair. Um, anyway, guys, um, so that's why we're competitive because we take time we have the proper parts of the shop, but we take time as a team to build for the next race. Like Sean Lane that came up to me and he goes, man, you make this look easy. And I said, yeah, because we had two months to prepare for it. That's the only reason, right? So you've been doing this how long now? Don't ask me that question, Donovan. I'm getting older. 
Uh, I've been driving a fuel car now for 20 years. I've been driving a dragster for probably, holy cow, let's go back to 91, uh, like 30 some odd years. Yeah, long time. Yeah, I got gray hair, Donovan. You see this? It used to be dark and black, and now it's really gray. I was here that one time where you, uh, uh, no, you don't want me to bring this up, but you were really, really close against Ashley. And this is your, I think that might have been your first final round. It and was. So what's the plan to have another performance like that this week and get the job done this time? I take a deep breath, man, because you can't think that far ahead. You just can't. Like, I know people come, I read press releases all day long of other drivers, and, oh, we're going to go there, and we're going to win, and we're going to run 70s, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that. Should be told, Donovan, it's really one run at a time, and you just try to get a little bit better and a little bit better. I know, for me, I can't think that far, because I'm still trying to work on my driving ability just from being gone for two months. So, um, it would mean a lot if we could do that. I mean, if you could turn your camera around, we have, right? And that's been hanging there forever. And it says, the end toward which effort is directed. You know, meaning we've been working really hard to get to that point. So, um, and we haven't, we haven't gotten yet, but we'll try. We'll keep on trying. And how many times have you been out so far this year? This it, is our third. Third time? Yeah, third time. We went to the semis at our first race back after almost a two year hiatus. Um, it took a long time to build this race car. Um, that Don Schumacher helped us out with, which was super. Um, and uh, to go out there to, the sem to go to the semi-final round your first race back was good. But then from there, we didn't qualify at the next, at the next event at Norwalk. We didn't qualify. So we kind of had to take a step back. So I know you're probably busy, so I'll ask you one more question. What is your favorite part of being here at the U.S. Nationals and at the drag strip with Top Fuel Car? What's the it, best part of it? It's easy. Fans. Fans and people. It's easy. It's really easy. Trust me, it's not measuring this head gasket, right? <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely the fans and the camaraderie of people, the friendship we have out here <clears> is awesome. Well, thank you so much, TJ. Congratulations right. on you, last night, and let's get it done this weekend. Thank you, Don. We're here in the pits with, at Indy with Gage Herrera. There's only one question to ask us that. How have you done it, man? You've killed everyone all year. Yeah, man, it's, uh, we're surrounded by an awesome group of people, you know. Uh, Andrew and all the guys at the shop, they put in so much work, you know, to get these bikes to be the best they can, you know. And, uh, it's a good combo, you know, I work, you know, I get along very well with Andrew, and I feel like, you know, me, uh, my different riding technique, or riding technique, kind of helped a few things, and, you know, we've been learning from each other, so it's just, uh, it's been amazing. So, um, I think you've lost, what, twice two, two the races, whole, whole yeah. season, yeah. so, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. Now, are your nerves a little different going into your first U.S. Nationals here in Postdoc Motorcycle? Uh, not really, you know, uh, like every race, we go to do business. I mean, this is a big race, it's a big go, it's, I mean, it's one everyone wants to win, you know. You know, there's nothing like winning any, so, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we're here, and uh, it's time to go do work. <laughs> one final question. Um... How, uh, how did you get into the pro stock motorcycle? Um, I'm very good friends with Gary and Karen Stouffer. You know, uh, I grew up in LA. They're originally from the Valley in LA. So, uh, you know, it's just mutual friends. My dad basically raced with them back in the day. And uh, Gary and me, ever since I moved to Indiana, um, we did a lot of bracket racing on the East Coast and stuff like that. And he has a school bike, and it was just one of those things. He's like, I used to have my pro stock license. And uh, so he just, one day, was like, you want to try to run the... U.S. National, which last year, this time, was my first time I ever run a pro stock, and uh, so it just came about, you know, it's out of nowhere. We thought about just doing the one race, and then it turned into the last six, all the countdowns last year, and now I'm here, living the dream. Well, good luck, man. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you. We're here at the U.S. Nationals with Troy Coughlin, Jr., and a lot of people go from pro stock and work their way up to top fuel. You did... You went to Top Fuel, and now you're down here and you've really found your stride in Pro Stock. You've been kicking butt this year. What's that like? Man, it's a lot of fun. I, I, you know, I think of Pro Stock, I think of uh, kind of an athlete's class because it's so precision driven, and you, you got to really be on top of your game and letting the clutch out and banging the gears just on time. 10.5, the rev limiter, you 
you really you got to be spot on. You got to get the car down the track and be in the groove and, and bang the shift. So it's uh, a lot of precision there from the driver side of things. And everybody knows your dad and then your uncle. They race pro bot and pro stock. Yep. So it's what's it like? I've never really known anyone on a professional level or talked to them about it. What's it like to just have deep family ties into the sport and just. It's, uh, it's a big honor and a lot of fun, and uh, I'm pretty fortunate. You know, I get a lot of great advice from Uncle Jake, uh, my dad, my Uncle Mike, my Uncle John, my grandfather, Jake Sr. Uh, family dinners, lunches, breakfasts, uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And what are your nerves like coming into an event like this, the U.S. National? It's pure excitement. You use those nerves just to keep uh, your, your, your juice, you know, you're, you're ready to go. This uh, I've won this race twice, and you just got to take those nerves and, and use them and call them awareness. Well, thank you, George. Thank you. Thanks for the time. All right, we've already done an interview, and you still don't need an introduction because you're awesome. But we're at the U.S. Nationals with Alex Laughlin. And this is your first U.S. Nationals in a funny car. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, you know. Um, as of last night, the first time I hit the gas in this car at this race makes five different categories uh, that I've competed in here from Pro Stock, Pro Mod, Top Alcohol Dragster, Top Fuel, and now uh, Nitro Funny Car. So it's a pretty awesome feeling uh, to be able to unlock those achievements. And are you able to get in the countdown this year? Are you we are. I actually haven't looked at the points at all because we haven't been in the top 10 and uh, I haven't just wasted my energy with getting bummed out on that. But um, the way it works, these days is as long as you make every race and all of the qualifying rounds, you do still get into the countdown. So we will still, even if we have to start from 11th or 12th place or whatever, we still have a shot at a real spot in the top 10. Alright, uh, so we, we had a, uh, what's the other sponsor? I know you got have a Yeah, there's, uh, there's a, a, long, a long list of them. Usually I have to like look at my fire suit or the car to remember them all, but Haviland, uh, Hot Wheels, Power Build Tools. We've got Depento, International Logistics, KGC, which is Kindness General Contractors, Moon Eyes, which is obviously a great one, Electrolit, uh, Fast Jack, uh, Popcorn Company. Uh, the list goes on and on. Blaze Pro Exhaust Probes. Um, I'm trying to make sure that we don't miss any, anybody out. Uh, USD Parts out of uh, Phoenix. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a long list, so we're really, really lucky. And you've got, you mentioned Hot Wheels. Is there going to be any more Hot Wheels made of you soon? We do have a funny car slotted for release in, wait for it, 2025. Oh. Um, it takes a long time to be able to put all of the tooling together and whatnot. So we don't know which body or what livery it's going to be or look like, but we do have our spot in line with production uh, to have a car released uh, in, you know, a while back it seemed like it was you know well over two years now it's you know barely a year away at this point so but it is going to be an actual alex laughlin paint scheme so of just a generic hot absolutely yeah awesome. this will be a custom custom build uh one of the premium cars metal body uh metal chassis rubber tires it'll be Sweet. it'll be bad to the bone for sure well that is awesome i won't take any more of your time but right, good buddy. luck alex thank you man we're here in the pits at Indy with Derek Kramer. And what's been the key to all the success you've had this year? Uh, a lot of luck on our, our part, honestly. It's uh, We do the same thing every week, and the cards kind of fall where they fall. We're just trying to not screw up as much as everyone else out here, and we've had a good year because of it. And, uh, well, since we're at the U.S. Nationals, there's only one question to ask you. Are you going to try to kill us all today with another monster burnout? Like well, that, that, that would be the best thing we could do. Uh, yeah, no, uh, Jason Lyon told me when I started leasing motors from them that my, uh, my days of long burnouts are over. But uh, we, we get enough write-in ballots, I swear. Uh, we'll, get, we'll get another long burnout for everybody. <laughs> is the nerds any different being here in Indy, or is it just like their regular week? I would say the first couple of times I've been to Indy, uh, the nerves were definitely a little higher. Um, now that I've been here, I mean, I, I think this is my 11th year in pro stock. Now that I've been here a handful of times, uh, it's uh, it's another race because it has to be another race. you got to go in with a level head and be ready to go and just, uh, just be ready. And how are the conditions today, Playing? Do you think you'll be able to jump up a spot? or? Uh, yeah, because we had a, a wheelie bar break in, uh, during the burnout yesterday, we didn't get to make a run, so we're at the bottom of the sheet. So the, uh, the conditions are not as good as last night, but they're still going to be good enough we'll be able to make a good run. All righty. Well, thank you, man. Absolutely. Good Thanks. luck. We're here, Andy, with Andrew Hines. And 
if y'all are kicking butt this year, Gator and uh, Hayward, so does that tempt you at all to get back on a bike? Uh, with Gage, having Gage on the team this year, it doesn't tempt me because the kid's doing a fantastic <laughs> job. So uh, it's anything I could have asked for to have a guy of that caliber on my bike. So it's, it's pretty cool. When we stopped by the shop earlier, uh, y'all weren't doing anything today. Did you all do any open house or anything? No, our shop's pretty uh, top secret usually. We keep it pretty closed doors. So. Um, we don't do a, a whole lot of fanfare and walkthroughs or anything like that, but if you're in the area, you usually hear us dynoing. <laughs> What's it like being at the U.S. Nationals again? It's it's awesome as a spectator. I couldn't even imagine what it's like as a crew guy or a teammate. What's it like being the crew chief at a race like this? Uh, it's pretty stressful. You know, this is one of the, the big races that everybody wants to win, so a lot of pressure. Everybody usually brings their A game. And, just got to figure out a way to keep our bikes consistent, keep the riders' minds right. You know, drag racing is 90% mental, so you got to have the right attitude going up there. And you're a driver uh, as well as a tuner, so what is it like driving a pro stock motorcycle? <laughs> it's a wild ride. I mean, it's doing, it's like a bucking Bronco sometimes. Sometimes it'll do everything it can to try and get you off the back. You know, no seat belts, no roll cage, you're just holding on with a little bit of uh, sticky glue in the seat and holding on the handlebars. So. The runs that are uh, super fast, they feel the smoothest, they feel the slowest, but they put up the biggest ETs. And it's boring for the fans, it's fun to see people hanging on and off and doing things like that, but as a rider, there's nothing better than remembering that perfect run. Okay. Well, I won't keep you up there. Thank you, yeah, guys. Good luck. Thank you. We're here at the U.S. Nationals, and for anybody who doesn't know this is, who this is, you've been living under a rock. This is Courtney Enders. She's basically my inspiration to do all I do. And I was going to ask you, what are some of your favorite parts about just being Miss Do Everything at the races? You know, the, the coolest thing, I say this all the time, the coolest thing about my job is my view. Where I stand, where I get to be in intimately with these drivers inside the ropes like we are now. I get to see a different view of what goes on, how these teams function, the guys in there working the autograph sessions, just the behind the scenes stuff and building a relationship with not just the drivers, but all of the people who make all this happen and then being able to amplify them for, for helping the drivers do what we love to watch them do. And you really, really built up a big fan base, a real big following, sometimes even bigger than what your sister has now. So what is that like walking in saying, I'm not even the driver, but if someone waves, they might be waving to me and not Erica. It makes me feel weird. I tell her on the car all the time, people are waving and I don't know what to do with my hands, but it's it's a little bit of imposter syndrome, but much like you, what you're doing now, I came in here hungry to want to be able to do stuff like this. And sometimes you have to just sit back and say, you know, the drivers aren't the only stars out here. And, and a lot of people are working really hard to do what we're doing. And so, although it makes me feel a little bit weird, it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> so I've been trying to get into the podcast thing because I've got a friend named Robbie, he sponsors my car and I've been talking to him about what it's like, but what is it like having your own podcast? Or, well, it's not a podcast, because you all show your face yeah. and stuff with Stevie and Lyle. What's that like? It's, it's pretty cool because I've got three rolling right now. I've got one that's required to do through work, um, through Flow Racing, called Right Off Track. That was a little more serious. It's part of the work gig, but the Shake and Bake show with Stevie and Lyle, that's just fun. Like, that's my favorite part of every week. I quit work early on Tuesdays. I head to the gym, get it all out of the way so that I can look forward to going and being in that space, but it's, I, I don't take it for granted that I'm honored to be able to have a space where for some reason people listen to what we say. And so I take that very seriously. And although we're not very serious on that show, I do take it very seriously because there's there's not a lot of us that have a voice or a powerful voice to broadcast the sport that we love so much. So it's pretty cool that people pay me to talk. Like that's the dream. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. And do you, are you officially like, in affiliated with the Mission Too Fast, Too Pasty thing, or do you just go up there with your sister? No, it's just our drivers. So I cover Erica, I cover Aaron Stanfield, I cover the Quadra Boys, and really at Joey Don Tucker, anybody in our elite motorsports ranks. So I handle their schedules and all of their PR appearances. So if, if there's one of our drivers that has to be somewhere with that, I'm there. And so our drivers have been kicking butt this year, so we've been there a lot. And I've seen the movie uh, about you and your sister, and everyone knows you started off in juniors, like we said, and you race. When are we going to see you back in the car, if we ever will? You know, Bo Butner actually asked me all the time. He tells me I need to relicense in all my all my sportsman stuff. I race super stock, I ran stock, um, super comp, top dragster, all that stuff. But it's been quite a few years, so uh, I would never do it professionally like they do. I love what I do. I have found my true calling out here. 
but that doesn't take away from the fact that it's still fun to be behind the wheel and uh, I'll probably mess around in one of both of cars here pretty soon. Awesome. Well, thank you, Courtney. Thank you. It's nice to meet you. Good luck, man. Thank you. <laughs>